Hey guys, Anthony 4 before Diesel. We're driving a 1GD FTV and there's been people asking questions, lots of questions. And one of the main ones is around how long are the injectors gonna last? How long are the seats gonna last? What problems are we gonna expect? And I suppose now that they're around six to seven years old in Australia and getting approaching those sorts of kilometers, we need to discuss what maintenance needs to happen to avoid catastrophic disaster. Now I'll give you the good news and the bad news. The good news is um, the biggest problems aren't going to be injector related. Okay, So that's the good news. We'll just quickly run through why. The injectors in the 1GDs, they're a little bit different, but all the technology of the 1KDs have been used there, the DLC coatings and all that sort of thing. So the 1GD injectors even at the start are going to be just as good or a little bit better than the injectors in the 1KDs towards the end. So if you get what I mean, over a, de over a decade, 1KD injectors changed and evolved and by, the, by towards the end of the last few years, let's say 2012 onwards, they were actually really good. Um, the only reason you might not have heard of a 1GD uh, cracking a piston is because they're a completely different design piston. We're not going to go into that. Um, so they may or probably not go to crack pistons. But the other factor you've got to think about is it's actually too early to tell if there's going to be a problem with pistons cracking. Because the example, once again, somebody I said he brought a new 2011 150 Prado. Years later, I said, you know, he's worried about cracking pistons. I said, in 2011, when you purchased the vehicle, did you do your research? Yep, I did. Have you ever heard of a cracked piston in 2011? No, I haven't. And at that point in time, 1KDs had been out in Australia for six years, which is around about where we are with 1GDs. Now, everybody's heard about uh, DPF problems. People have heard about timing, timing chain guide issues, whatever the case may be. A few other little issues, but, you know, there's nothing major in particular. It's, you know, there's a few little issues. Most of them, for the most part, go very well. Now, what they've done different, there's a few things different we've talked about in other videos, so we'll try and keep this one brief, uh, for now at least. We might go into a bit more detail later, but the injectors. Now, before where the injectors um, had a situation where they were warmed and cooled by oil, they had oil moving around them, um, you had the injector seats, then the oil. When the seats leaked, then the oil would come down, then the compression leaking past the seat would carbonise the oil, and then that, of course, it's in the oil system, blocks the oil pick up, and that's good by engine eventually, if it's not picked up, which is why we say on every engine, especially a 1KD, because we know about this problem, this is what we specialise in, but in every engine, check the oil pickup, because even if it's missed oil changes, even on a petrol engine, it can gum up that oil pickup and the oil won't get in there and it's going to be good by engine. So no engine is bulletproof. Well, maybe not no engine, but generally speaking. So what they've done is they've totally changed it. It's a little bit easier to change the injectors. A lot of this information you'll find in our, there's another video, changing 1GD injectors. You know, when do you need to do that? A few little bits and pieces of information here or there. But I suggest it's not that urgent because... A, the seats, they're a little bit thicker, they're a little bit different, they've been redesigned and we don't think that they're going to leak anytime soon because we know that even with the 1KDs, based on averages, even though we recommend changing them under 200,000, but we do see them last over 300,000, sometimes over 400. I say that's risky. We don't know how long the 1GD ones are going to last other than I believe they're going to last well beyond 200,000 Ks. So they're a little bit different. They're a little bit thicker. So they've changed things a little bit. And the key part of the information here is when they do leak, there's no oil there. So it might cause problems with them getting stuck, getting welded in. There's some other issues with water coming down into that area. It's not sealed that well. It can create some rust so they can get stuck. So that's what your concerns are. Now, I've got a bit of a dry throat, so I'm going to take a bit of a break and uh, oh, so we'll come back to you. This is good while we're sitting in some traffic. Um, so, I'll try and explain what the concerns with the engine may be, but I just want to be really clear because I make these mistakes where I go 1KD, 1GD, 1GA, you know, it's all very confusing. So, I just want to recap and make sure I said the right thing. So, on the 1KD, 
that's where we recommend changing them somewhere under the 200,000 K mark again there's some variables you know the 7 year 170 but there's some variables there and we do see that sometimes they last 300,000 Ks the seats and the injectors are working okay but there's sometimes they'll appear to be working okay and they're not working okay if you know what I mean so you want to get them out before that happens <coughs> excuse me especially if it's an 09 10 11 and probably 12 because they're very old and a lot of those are not full DLC injectors the replacements are now back to the 1GD so in my opinion from what I've seen so far and I don't see that much because the vehicles are very new um, so we don't see them as much and it's still early days for problems that we're going to see outside of warranty the injectors I believe are really good so it's kind of like I don't know when to tell you to change injectors at this stage because so far so good so in the comments if you've got a 1GD please let us know what year it is and how many k's you've done just keep it short and sweet um, you can include any other issues you've had if you like for the viewers I think we may even have a 1GD playlist there so if you want to know more information about the 1GDs we'll pop this video in there if we remember and you'll probably find some others in there and if we don't have one yet I'll make that playlist I'll pop this one in and try and find some others and put them in there for you that way you can just go there to that playlist on our channel uh, 1GD information or whatever it'll be called and you can check out those videos and they'll be named accordingly hopefully if I get it right okay so injectors are good 200,000, 250, I reckon they're still working pretty well with the way the new design pistons are, which we're not going to go in when I say new 2015 in the 1GD. We're not going to go into that, right? We've discussed it before. It's not a big deal. They're just totally different and um, to deal with the heat, and they're not going to, most likely, I can't say they're not, absolutely not ever because ever hasn't been yet. You know, we're only where we're up to so far, but I believe that they're probably not going to crack pistons. Okay. So pistons are not an issue, injectors are not an issue, um, a blocked oil pickup is not an issue. So you don't really, look, you should just check it anyway if you can, but at the end of the day, um, there's, look, a diesel engine doesn't have gum in it like what the petrol contaminates the oil, and the clean is in the diesel. It's more just soot from your combustion, from your EGR system, so that's why your oil gets dirty otherwise it'd be quite clean not really clean but quite clean compared to you know a non-EGR you know an EGR versus non-EGR so your EGR system is what makes the oil dirty okay it's soot loading is the problem in a diesel and soot loading isn't going to block the oil pickup I shouldn't tell you this but I've seen diesel engines long overdue for oil changes and not have any issues so you're not going to have a blocked oil pickup generally speaking so you don't need to worry about your injectors or your oil pickups in your 1GD now we just briefly mentioned earlier in this video and in another video about the water getting in around the injectors now that's a concern so be careful how much you wash your engine um, and how you wash your engine how much water you use if it's just a bit dusty maybe leave that plastic cover on and just give it a quick rinse off avoid getting water in there um, if it's a bit older higher in case you know you've had the cover off and wash the engine or it's been messing you've had to give it a good wash then perhaps it's now time to spray and look and it may not work but you could spray some sort of uh, you know that you know put something to work against the rust just a little bit of some sort of lanolin or rust prevention spray down around those injectors I don't see that it's going to hurt anything it may help it may just evaporate and do nothing as well um, but somewhere down the track there is a risk that injectors are going to get stuck in these engines so we need to see more of them before we can share more information so like I say subscribe turn the bell on so that when we give you that information you're up to date or we'll come back and check that playlist every month or two sort of thing check out the playlist what's there and what's relevant to your vehicle so there's a possibility from what we've seen so far that's going to happen so there's a reason that you may want to do a maintenance every say 200,000 k's even if you think all the injectors are okay it's running well no smoke any perfect economy just like you everything's beautiful you might just want to uh, you know get those injectors out and change the seats that sort of thing keep it clean you could probably reuse the pipes again you can because it'll be the first time they've been out and this sort of thing right so you may want it but we might change to say look it's not weird that was only on one we haven't seen that since we might say it's happening on every vehicle oh yeah we've had some look at look at this one we've had it hanging off the roof for a week and we're trying to twist it to get it out we don't know what the future holds that's why I suggest subscribe turn the bell on we're gonna see a few of these sooner or later um, so basically around the injectors and the block door pickup it's not a concern now the 
timing chain sort of thing. I think they sorted that out by some modifications with engine components. I think it was around 2018, so anything before 18, there's a possibility you could have that timing chain guide issue. So you may want to ask your Toyota dealer what the situation is. Has it got a 10 year warranty like the DPF, right? So that's something you might, you might want to mention, because that's something that could come up. You could have things like dirty MAF sensors. Could happen on any car, but there's been some issues with dirty, dusty MAF sensors putting into limp mode. That's why you want to have some sort of scan tool. We're going to be testing a lot more scan tools soon. I just thought I'd mention that. Different scan tools for the DIY and for workshops and stuff. So you might want to just uh, be tuned in on that to see what we like, what we don't, and what's good value for money. Some different brands and stuff like that. Uh, because when you get these codes, you need to know what it is. Because if you are out in the outback and it happens to you, then if you've got that code reader there and the data and you know that code, or you can contact someone and find out what the code is, you know, go on our Facebook group and say, hey, I've got a blah, blah, blah. Because these days you've got internet bloody everywhere, even out in the middle of nowhere. Anyway, you can then go, oh, math sensor, or oh, dirty or high light, whatever. And then you can clean it, right? So with the 1GD, what spares do you carry? You carry that mass, math, math, see, whatever, mass airflow, but yeah, math sensor cleaner, so that you can clean it, let it evaporate and dry, blow it if you can, whatever, these sorts of things, and it'll probably solve your problem. Some other issues, not much really. The big one that everybody's heard about, not everybody, DPF, DPF issues, and I'm not gonna go into it a big, big way, but you know, got a different sort of uh, belief on the DPFs and what the issues really are but either way they get better at knowing how you and I and everybody uses the vehicle and based on averages they change the software and if the DPFs damage from all these bodgy burns from the software that didn't suit what you needed um, then they may have replaced that DPF and they may have given you a, a long warranty 10 years because that's awesome customer service and they fix them up for free. I know for some people it's been a real pain. So that's why, if you remember, or you should be listening, and that's why I'll say it again, subscribe, listen to what I'm saying. It's good information. Leading up to 2015 and still now I say, stick with the last of the Vesta 1KD. We know the beast. We know all the solutions. We know how to avoid everything. It's quite simple to maintain this sort of thing. And if everybody was listening and on board and chucked in that 50 or 100 bucks that... Uh, VIP Gold Class, we'd have that much there. We'd, anytime somebody cracked a piston, no fuss, we'd be able to replace everyone's engines instead of the odd engine, or instead of only being able to contribute, or instead of only being able to pay your uh, VCAT, QCAT, NCAT fees if you need to go to small claims to get that engine covered because it's an abnormal failure. But that's another story, just like um, the timing chain and the timing got the guide problem the timing issue with the uh, 1GD anyway guys that's enough just wanted to give you an idea of what lifespan you can expect from the injectors stay tuned we'll have some more videos explaining more detail on these vehicles and others bada bing bada boom you know the deal catch you later smash that like button if you liked it see ya have a look at this what a machine mate has that got guns on it or what this is it says Police rescue vehicle. Mate, that is heavy duty. Let's try and get around. We're going.